Because there's a way in which these children see the world because they use both hemispheres of their brain that you can't evaluate. Howard Gardner, in his book, A Whole New Mind, not A Whole New Mind, um, I'll remember the title, in the <coughs> but in it, Frames of Mind, and it was about um, different ways of knowing, different kinds of intelligence. He describes young people whose ability describes a student learning the Koran by heart. He describes another student creating music, composing music on a computer in Paris, and, a, and another student learning to navigate the waters of the, of, the, of the Tahitian Isles by using the stars. He says, all of those abilities cannot be assessed on a standard test. There are things that we just can't know in the same way. And the way our children see the world and continue to see the world, if they're not jaded, that's something that goes on inside them. But they're well served by learning through art and learning through music, not just drawing, visual arts. Music permeates a Waldorf school, both the recorder playing and the singing and the stringed instruments that children often play. They say that when you hook a child up with wires to the brain to see about electrical activity in the brain, when they play a violin, their whole brain lights up because you have the abstract notation from reading music and the affective experience of experiencing music. And that's what we want. We want that complete human encounter. Storytelling is just an important part of the future. Our daughter-in-law is in an MBA program at Georgetown University. They asked her in this, who do you think is gonna be the most important person in, in a company in the future? The answer was the storyteller, because he tells the story of your brand, and that's what people want. You see it in the catalogs now, don't you? You see the story behind your product. We want the story behind our food. We want to know where it comes from, who raised it, how they raised it. We want to know what things are about. Doctors are trained to take stories now in medical school from their patients because the patient's story is really important to understanding their illness. I just heard a, a podcast from this radio show on TV with uh, Krista Tippett. It's a great show. She was interviewing a woman named Rachel Remen, Rachel Naomi Remen. She's really an inspirational person. And she's one of the first people to talk about taking the story of patients. She teaches at the University of San Francisco. She tells the story about a, a man who had cancer and whose doctor told him there was nothing else they could do. And he still made an appointment to see the doctor because he wanted to have that human conversation. We need to tell our stories. In fact, our mental health depends on our ability to tell our story <coughs> to others, to really see our life as a story, to see the turning points in our life as part of the story. We can teach so much to our children through story. The original people in our world have always understood that. They've taught all the moral, ethical lessons that children need through a story. And it's so different than teaching moral and ethical lessons through a lecture. <laughs> Stories just come into you naturally. And what I love about a story is no one has a prelude to the story that tells a child, this is the lesson you should know. You just tell them a story and they'll take the story that means something to them. We tell fairy tales in first grade, but which one speaks to the child? Is it the one where the kindness of the simple child, the kindness to animals, really touches a child's heart? and become something they take with them 
wanting always to demonstrate that kindness? Or is it the lesson that's in a fable like the wind and the sun, where with all its strength and power, the wind cannot accomplish what the sun's loving warmth is able to do? You know, what are the lessons and what are the, the deeper meanings in the stories we tell? I remember I was 20 years old. I went to an exposition in Montreal. And in it, I stopped in a pavilion and watched a show in which they were showing slides of Aboriginal people. In this case, they were hunting on the Amazon, hunting wild creatures like the anaconda. And they said, you know, there is a legend that in ancient times in Greece, there was a labyrinth. And within that labyrinth, there was a beast, half man, half bull, that would devour seven youths and seven maidens every year, or every seven months. And do we believe that there really was such a creature? He says, probably not. But can we deny that in the twisted confines of the human heart, there isn't a beast that blocks the way when we try to know ourselves. And what that helped me know is that these stories that we call myths, which has become synonymous with untruth, they tell something about our inner journey as people. And it's a part we have to know. And children are drawn to those stories if we don't explain them away. Because they're trying to understand how darkness fits into our world of life. That's why they love Star Wars. That's why they love Harry Potter. That's why they love the Lord of the Rings. Because they're trying to understand the darkness in the world. Because on some level they know that the darkness is also in our hearts. And it's something we have to come to terms with. Alexander Solzhenitsyn was one that's asked, why haven't we eradicated evil in the world? And he said, who's willing to cut, off, cut out a piece of their own body? Right? Because it's in us all. That's our challenge, that's our work. How do we live our best selves? How do we be the better angels of us? Right? So stories are wonderfully instructive for children. It's a perfect way for them to learn, whether it's science or math or history, which is all a story, which should all come alive and be dramatic. Walter teachers are great storytellers, and the truth is that Walter students are great story listeners. <laughs> they love a well-told story, and there's so much to learn in it, and they'll take the lesson with them, and they won't even know <coughs> that they've taken it with them because it quietly goes from the heart of the teller to the heart of the children.